the house on Mongo Street. We didn't always live on Mongo Street. Before that, we lived on Loomis on the third floor. And before that, we lived on Keeler. Before Keeler, it was Paulina, and before that, I can't remember. But what I remember most is moving a lot. Each time, it seemed there'd be one more of us. By the time we got to Mongo Street, we were six. Mama, Papa, Carlos, Kiki, my sister Nanny, and me. The house on Mongo Street is ours, and we don't have to pay rent to anybody, or share the yard with the people downstairs, or be careful not to make too much noise, and there isn't a landlord banging on the ceiling with a broom. But even so, it's not the house we thought we'd get. We had to leave the flat on Loomis quick. The water pipes broke and the landlord wouldn't fix them because the house was too old. We had to leave fast. We were using the washroom next door and carrying water over in empty milk gallons. That's why Mama and Papa looked for a house. And that's why we moved into the house on Mongo Street, far away, on the other side of town. They always told us that one day we would move into a house, a real house, that would be ours for always so we wouldn't have to move each year. And our house would have running water and pipes that worked. And inside it would have real stairs, not hallway stairs, but stairs inside like the houses on TV. And we'd have a basement and at least three washrooms so when we took a bath we wouldn't have to tell everybody. Our house would be white with trees around it, a great big yard and grass growing without a fence. This was the house Papa talked about when he held a lottery ticket, and this was the house Mama dreamed up in the story she told us before we went to bed. But the house on Mongo Street is not the way that they told it at all. It's small and red with tight steps in front and windows so small you think they were holding their breath. Bricks are crumbling in places and the front door is so swollen you have to push hard to get in. There's no front yard, only four little elms the city planted by the curb. Out back is a small garage for the car we don't own yet and a small yard that looks smaller between the two buildings on either side. There are stairs in our house, but they're not ordinary hallway stairs and the house has only one washroom. Everybody has to share a bedroom. Mama and Papa, Carlos and Kiki, me and Nanny. Once when we were living on Loomis, a nun from my school passed by and saw me playing out front. The laundromat downstairs had been boarded up because it had been robbed two days before, and the owner had painted on the wood, yes, we're open, so as not to lose business. Where do you live, she asked. There, I said, pointing up to the third floor. You live there? There? I had to look to where she pointed. The third floor, the paint peeling, wooden bars, Papa had nailed on the window so we wouldn't fall out. You live there? The way she said it made me feel like nothing. There. I lived there. I nodded. I knew then I had to have a house, a real house, one I could point to, but this isn't it. The house on Mongo Street isn't it. For the time being, Mama says, temporary, says Papa, but I know how those things go. Hairs. Everybody in our family has different hair. My Papa's hair is like a broom, all up in the air. And me, my hair is lazy. It never obeys barrettes or bands. Carlos's hair is thick and straight. He doesn't need to comb it. Ninny's hair is slippery, slides out of your hand. And Kiki, who is the youngest, has hair like fur. But my mother's hair, my mother's hair, like little rosettes, like little candy circles all curly and pretty because she pinned it in pin curls all day, sweet to put your nose into when she is holding you, holding you when you feel safe, is the warm smell of bread before you bake it, is the smell when she makes room for you on her side of the bed still warm with her skin and you sleep near her, the rain outside falling and Papa snoring. The snoring, the rain, and Mama's hair that smells like bread. Boys and girls. The boys and the girls live in separate worlds. The boys in their universe and we in ours. My brothers, for example, they've got plenty to say to me and Ninny inside the house. But outside, they can't be seen talking to girls. Carlos and Kiki are each other's best friend, not ours. Ninny is too young to be my friend. She's just my sister, and that was, that was not my fault. You don't pick your sisters. You just get them and sometimes they come like Ninny. She can't play with those Vargas kids or she'll turn out just like them. And since she comes right after me, she is my responsibility. Someday I will have a best friend all my own. One I can tell my secrets to. 
one who will understand my jokes without my having to explain them. Until then, I am a red balloon, a balloon tied to an anchor. My name. My name. In English, my name means hope. In Spanish, it means too many letters. It means sadness. It means waiting. It is like the number nine, a muddy color. It is the Mexican records my father plays on Sunday mornings when he is shaving, songs like sobbing. It was my great-grandmother's name, and now it is mine. She was a horsewoman, too, born like me in the Chinese year of the horse, which is supposed to be bad luck if you're born female. But I think this is a Chinese lie, because the Chinese, like the Mexicans, don't like their women strong. My great-grandmother... I would have liked to have known her, a wild horse of a woman, so wild she wouldn't marry, until my great-grandfather threw a sack over her head and carried her off, just like that, as if she were a fancy chandelier. That's the way he did it. And the story goes she never forgave him. She looked out the window her whole life, the way so many women sit their sadness on an elbow. I wonder if she made the best with what she got, or was she sorry because she couldn't be all the things she wanted to be. Esperanza. I have inherited her name, but I don't want to inherit her place by the window. At school they say my name funny, as if the syllables were made out of tin and hurt the roof of your mouth. But in Spanish, my name is made out of a softer something, like silver, not quite as thick as my sister's name, Magdalena, which is uglier than mine. Magdalena, who at least can come home and become ninny, but I am always Esperanza. I would like to baptize myself under a new name, a name more like the real me, the one nobody sees. Esperanza as Lisandra or Maritza or Zizi the X. Yes, something like Zizi the X will do.